Richmond Heights, a neighborhood in the southwest area of Miami previously referred to as the Woods or the Boondocks because it was just so far away from the city. I'm Angie Blanco, a realtor here in Miami, Florida with One Path Realty, and in this video, we're taking a deep dive into Richmond Heights, one of Miami's historic neighborhoods that was developed right after World War II. In this video, we'll touch on housing in Richmond Heights, schools, parks, churches, shopping centers, and of course, a little bit of its rich history. But before we start, let me show you the neighborhood's borders, which is just a tight little triangular pocket. On the northeast side, we're bordered by part of the Cutler Drain Canal, west to the Turnpike, and south to 152nd Street. Small little pocket, but packs a punch. The housing here in Richmond Heights is predominantly single family homes, about 90% of it probably. And for the most part, these homes range from three to five bedrooms and from one to three bathrooms. An original and unmodified house in this neighborhood has only three bedrooms, one bathroom, and just over 900 square feet of living space sometimes even closer to 800. Today, that's considered tiny, but at the time they were built, they were considered, quote, heaven on earth. And so over the years and sale after sale, most of these homes have been modified and expanded with additional bedrooms, bathrooms, carports, or garages to fit our more modern needs of wanting more space. Some have also even been rebuilt entirely from the ground up. Within the last six months, these single family homes have sold between about 300,000 all the way to about 600,000, all depending of course on size, condition, and competition, which we can be sure we'll be experiencing here. At the time of recording this video, there are only six homes available for sale here with an asking price ranging from about 400 all the way to about 550,000. The other 10% of this neighborhood that is not single family homes is composed of townhomes right along the southwest border of the neighborhood, as well as a couple of apartment buildings like Villa Socorro, Richmond Pine Apartments, and John and Anita Ferguson residences. These townhomes were built at a later date after the single family homes were and are from two to three bedrooms and one bathroom. And within the last six months, these have sold at a price between two and 300,000, decently more affordable. Moving on to the schools in the neighborhood, there is Frank C. Martin K through eight, which has a magnet program and an IB program, Richmond Heights Middle, which also has a magnet program as well as a Cambridge International program. And for high schools, there is Coral Reef High and Biotech at Richmond Heights High, both of which are outstanding award-winning magnet schools. Now, these are schools that are located inside of the Richmond Heights pocket, but they're not all necessary the homeschools of the area. For example, the elementary homeschools for residents of Richmond Heights are Frank C. Martin K-8, through as previously mentioned, as well as Colonial Drive Elementary, just south of the Richmond Heights borders, and which also offers a Cambridge International program. The middle school homeschools are, again, Richmond Heights Middle, as previously mentioned as well, and Arvida Middle, which is just north of the neighborhood borders and also is a magnet school. And lastly, the high school homeschool for the area is Miami Killian Senior High, also just north of the Heights and also offers a magnet program, Cambridge International, and career academies. <laughs> Now we'll explore the parks. And in my opinion, this is one of the most important characteristics of any neighborhood, because not only does it help increase your property values, but it's also a place to gather, spend time together, maybe break up your workday with a walk and some fresh air. And also the greenery is just so soothing. So here we have Ferguson Park, Richmond Triangle Park, Walter A. White Park, and Sergeant Joseph Delancey Park. That's four parks in this rather small neighborhood. I think they got it right and other neighborhoods should take note. There are also quite a few churches in the neighborhood and just to name a few out of the six, we have Glendale Church, Second Baptist Church on Pinkston Drive, and the Bethel Church of Miami, right on Lincoln Boulevard. As far as shopping centers go, there are two plazas in the community, which are the Promenade Plaza and the Larsenia J. Bullard Plaza. At the Promenade Plaza, there's absolutely everything you could need. There's a gym, a CVS, a mobile gas station, a supermarket, a barbershop, a couple of fast food options, and even a medical center. The Larsenia J. Bullard Plaza is a brand new building that's now open for leasing and is already home to Mr. Jack's Soul on the Go, a highly rated and delicious soul food restaurant. Now granted, these are not shopping malls, and if you did want to go to a mall, they're no more than about 20 minutes away. But for a neighborhood of this size, I think these two plazas cover a lot of ground and are absolutely convenient for the residents, wouldn't you say? And now for what I've been so excited to talk about, which is just a little bit of history of Richmond Heights, because there is so much to it. And before I start, I want to let you know that as I do these neighborhood tours, I also learn so much about about my own city that I didn't know before, which is so interesting because 
there's so much information out there that unless you do your own digging in your own local areas, you don't really find out about. So let's get into it. Richmond Heights was established back in 1949 after World War II by Captain Frank C. Martin, a Pan American pilot who served in the war alongside many other brave soldiers. Now, during this time, we know that racial prejudice and segregation was rampant, and Martin saw that. He saw the hardships that black people unfairly went through right beside him, regardless of them also having served in the war and also having risked their lives. And because of the segregation and horrible racial prejudice, quality housing and home ownership in general was made almost unattainable for black people. So Martin decided to do something about it. And having been a pilot, he scanned the areas for high and dry ground and eventually bought a hundred acres of land, which he then cleared and began developing with the help of a local advisory committee of African-American leaders. They planned this neighborhood for returning World War II African African American veterans with wide curving streets, sidewalks, and modern homes, and it soon became the standard bearer for other developers to provide well-built homes without skimping on land, materials, and labor. The community grew incredibly quickly and happily with barber shops, flower shops, grocery stores, dentist's office, and the pride of homeownership was clear as homeowners took care of their homes, mowed their lawns, planted new flowers, and gathered with their neighbors. And as I said in the beginning of this video, it was considered heaven on earth. I also mentioned that it was previously referred to as the woods or the boondocks and that's because in the 1940s and earlier this area really didn't exist. It was mostly forest and undeveloped land so comparing this area to central Miami or downtown Miami it was quite different. U.S. Coast Guard Chief Petty Officer Luther H. Wallace and his wife Mary were the first to purchase a home in this development followed by 26 other families soon thereafter. And these families are honored today on the Richmond Heights Pioneers Monument as the first families of the community, the pioneers. Martin's son mentioned, quote, my father got the plans and put in the roads, but it was these families that made this a community. And on July 20th, 2016, the Miami-Dade Historic Preservation Board finally designated Richmond Heights as a historic district, a milestone that these families have journeyed a long way for. Truly an amazing history, and I just barely touched the tip of the iceberg. I urge you to do more of your own research in your local area. I'm sure it'll be so interesting. If you wanted to reach out to me, feel free to do so. All of my information is down in the description. And if you wanted to check out another neighborhood tour that doesn't compare in history, but is also pretty nice, then check this one out where we talk all about the Redlands. Happy watching and I will see you on the next one.